All right, we're going to call this meeting to order. Sorry for the wait, sorry for the inconvenience, but uh, we're going to get rolling. We're going to do a roll call. Uh, Robbie or Peyton, if you will, or I'll do it. Robbie, do the roll call, and Peyton, you mark it down, will you? Okay. Commissioner Waddell? Here. Commissioner Scott? Here. Commissioner Denenberg? Here. Commissioner Smallridge? Here. Commissioner White? Here. Commissioner Val? Here. Commissioner Meredith? Here. Commissioner Fred? Here. Oh, that's anybody else. I think it's got us all, isn't it? Okay. Everybody. That's good. Thank you. That's everybody. Public hearing? Yes, if anybody has any. Public hearing. Anybody going to talk to us? If not, we're going to go on to number two, cash and fund balance report. Robbie Holbrook. All righty. With their cash and fund balance, the general fund, total fund balance is $7.9 million unassigned up again to 4.4 million where we paid back the money from the ESG loan. So we're just under the 4.5 million requiring two thirds votes that we set the new um, fund balance rate we set this year requiring two thirds votes. So we're just under that, but cash is at 12.1 million, which is just a little bit under last year's cash at 12.4 million, but um, we're still looking good, I think, as far as the cash and fund balance report looks. Anybody have any questions? Does that count the money that we received for the uh, convenience center? Bill? <coughs> no, we have not received that yet. Okay. And will we receive money from the city also on that? There may, yes. Okay. So that's not, not included. Yes, that's not included. Any other questions? Carry on, Mr. Robbie. All right. Sales tax report in March, no, April, sorry, we collected 3.2 million total in sales tax, which sets up. 300,000 from last April, um, a 12% increase in total. And for Anderson County, we were at 361,720 total collections, which is up $80,000 from last year. So Anderson County still, I mean, I keep saying, let's look at next month, let's look at next month, and each month we're still doing just as well. So good. And as far as the EMS report, uh, after, um, 11 months, they collected 95.5% of their revenues at 5.5 million, and they spent 5.1 million, 85.93, and that's a surplus of $344,981. So I keep saying this every month, they're, they're doing a really good job with their expenses and good. revenue. We appreciate that. Yeah. Any questions? I have a question. Any questions? Yes, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to ask, uh, Robbie, the amount for EMS, does that include the monies that they've had to spend for the PPE during the COVID? It does. Yes, it does. So they have more expenses because of that, so, which some of those will be reimbursed for also. Exactly. I just wanted to make that point. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, ma'am. Any other questions? Let's go to the consent agenda. That is 0 through 28A consent agenda. Anybody have any questions? Yes, sir, I do. Go ahead, ma'am. Um, this is Commissioner Scott. I'd, I'd like to make a comment just in general about item number four. It's um, regarding the IT department, um, simply saying that shouldn't IT be taking care of everything IT related? Um, well, this perhaps, perhaps looking to put everything in their code and let them you know, when there needs to be three computers, in other words, ordered, he may get a better deal on eight. And there could be another department that has one coming up for renewal and another department that has three more or four more coming up for renewal within the next six months. And therefore, you know, Brian and or his department would know to um, purchase it ahead of time, um, therefore saving the county extra money as well. Thank you, Commissioner Scott. We'll let Robbie answer that. Well, this is actually my budget amendment for my department for three computers. And every department, I know we've had several departments buy computers this year. We haven't done it that way, but that's a good point. And we could talk to Brian about that because we set our capital outlay plan for the last five years, and this was already on there. So um, I didn't know if we'd have enough money at the end of the year to purchase these, but um, 
I went ahead and decided to try to get the money to do it because um, we have to buy two more servers next year. So um, yes, I mean, we can talk to, I talked to Brian about that, but he did approve the plan and the purchase of the computers. And we're getting them basically two for six, I mean, one for $600. So we're getting them pretty cheap as it is. Well, Are you and one of, but one of the reasons why I'm bringing it up, Robbie, is that, you know, there's going to be people throwing their arms up. I'm sure I'm confident of it within the next six to eight months saying we need new monitors. We all want the great big ones like, you know, they have over at Tim Shelton's office. Well, if they'd have ordered 25 at the same time, we'd have probably gotten a better deal than getting them one here, one there, or just one department's worth. Um, right. Well, that's more of a question for Brian and IT that we could maybe sure. take inventory at the end of the year and see. And I'll sure. definitely tell them if you ask that question. Good point, Ms. Teresa. Thank you. Thank you. And I Any also other? have I also have a question about item number um, eight and nine and 10. This is all to do with these coolers. Go um, ahead and ask us. Well, I remember just a few months ago, Cherie came to us saying, oh, we need more money for electricity and um, we need more money for utilities. She didn't know how much, but we gave her a round amount figure. And oddly enough, this is where a lot of that money's coming from. Um, on page eight, there's $1,850 that was earmarked for utilities and is now you know, being put off to the side for a cooler. Um, another $1,000 on page nine is being pulled away and put towards internet and phone services. Page 10 is another $3,200 from postal charges, custodial charges of $3,000, and then printing um, stationery and forms to be earmarked for a cooler. Um, you know, I just find it ironic that there's about $5,000 um, that was earmarked for other things that were necessities and had to be put off to the side right away because they had big bills coming and now we're looking to buy a cooler. So it, it's not coming out of those funds that were from fundraising or events and so forth. So I'd like those three particular items pulled out of this consent agenda. Oh, Miss Teresa, look, Cherie, is, this is a uh, this is a uh, trying time for them from moving from this small building into a new building. So she probably didn't know or realize what the charges was going to be or what all she is going to need. If this, this cooler may be a uh, something that that they desperately need before they can open up down there. So, uh, well, the mayor can respond to this too because she sent a letter out at the end of the day. They're not actually buying a cooler anymore because that's not even enough money to buy the cooler, but the 5,000. All right, Ms. Tracy, we'll pull that off. We'll pull that out. I'm, Thank you I, I didn't very much. She, but she, they did change it to other stuff. I don't, I mean, I'm just saying you can- We'll pull it out. It. We'll pull it out. Eight, Thank nine, you. and 10, eight, nine, yes, and 10, we'll pull it out. Thank yes, you. Sir. Thank you very much. Any other questions on the consent, uh, consent agenda? Move yes, forward, let's go. Second. Can we make a motion? We need to add zero to the consent agenda too. Okay, I, I, want, an, I want a motion to approve the consent agenda and I want them on the same motion. I want a motion to uh, add, zero. add zero to 70. No, zero to, to 28A on the consent. Then I'll get the others added in the next. Oh, wait a minute now. And we're moving eight, nine and 10. Well, I'll make that uh, Just a check for each. Uh, all right, Ms. Fritz, thank you. I got the motion and I got a second. Second. All right. I had already seconded. Yes, I understand. All in favor say aye, and uh, uh, Peyton will, uh, if everybody will say, give me a roll call. <laughs> I hate these meetings. <laughs> All right. Commissioner Scott? Aye. Commissioner Denenberg? Aye. Mr. Fred? Aye. Commissioner Smallridge? Yes. Waddell? Aye. Commissioner White? Aye. Commissioner Val? Aye. And Commissioner Meredith? Aye. Okay.
Motion approved. All right. So we're going to take eight, nine, and ten separately. We're going to take eight, nine, and ten out. We're not even going to talk about it. Okay. Thank you. All right. We're not going to talk about it. We'll, we'll go to the full commission with that. With the mayor's. Uh, yes. Okay, Miss Miss Scott, the uh, the mayor is going to address those items at the end of this meeting. So we'll uh, we're going to pull that out of the consent agenda right now, and then when the mayor comes in, we will talk about eight, nine, and ten, uh, and then we'll ask your questions again. Ten four. Thank you. Then we'll go to uh, the schools. Wait, can we get a motion to add 70 to 70? That was included in that. That was just to add zero to the consent agenda. I'll make that motion. Well, All right, got a motion in a second. second. Got a motion in a second. All right. Roll call vote. Scott. Scott. Aye. Gittenberg. Aye. Fritz. Aye. Smallridge. Aye. Waddell. Aye. White. Aye. Bell. Aye. And Meredith. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, now. Sorry. Anderson County Schools. 28B through 39. Move to approve as a group. Second. Need us. Got a motion and a second. Roll call vote. Any discussion on that? Roll call vote. I, yes, sir. I have a question. Robbie. Ask me something. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Um, page 39, Julie Minton is asking for $24,000 to go towards her income. Should that not be someone else signing off on that? She's well, not. I'm sorry. It's not based, it's it's not for her income. I'm sure when Jim retired this year, we paid his vacation out. It left a shortage in that code, so they had to replace twenty four thousand dollars. It's the way I'm. I can't. I mean, Dr. Barrett or Julie may be online and can answer that. I'm I'm online if you need me to answer that. Well, answer Robbie, it. for the people at home, the way it's phrased is there's a $24,000 shift and it's increasing the financial services supervisor salary and it's coming from fiscal services accountants. And the detailed justification reads to transfer funds to provide adequate budgetary needs for the salary of the chief financial office with or officer within the business office. This adjustment is due to the retirement of Jim Woodward and assuming of that role by Julie Minton. So she is requesting $24,000, Mr. Chairman, whose salary was included in the accountants. She's the, like the finance director for the school department. It'd be no different than me making that the same budget amendment for the deputy for the salary of the finance director when Natalie left. I mean, that's who makes who presents these budget amendments to the for the school. Yeah. Dr. Parrott can speak too. Mr. Yes. Teresa, we're going to ask Dr. Parrott to explain that, please. Yes, that that's what that was. That was where Jim left in January and uh, where we paid his retirement out and we paid his vacation out. And that's how much that salary code is is short on that. Uh, her salary is actually set by the board, so it's not a raise or anything like that. It's just to make that uh, to make up that funding for this year. Dr. Perry, I wish that would have been explained a little bit better than what you did. Okay. And for clarification, Dr. Parrott, I would appreciate if you would sign off on that. I will do that. Thank yes, you. Sir. Well, and, and thank the, you, Dr. Parrott. And the board actually, the the board actually approves all of them that goes through that too. It's just this month the county, your budget committee met before our budget committee meets. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. EMS. We got a EMA. We're gonna do a roll call vote. Oh, on roll call vote on twenty eight B through thirty nine. Scott. Aye. Dinenberg. Aye. Britt. Aye. Smallridge. Aye. Waddell. Aye. White. Here. Bunny. Aye. Val. Aye. <laughs> Meredith. Aye. <laughs> 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 
Okay. All right. Number 40 is a uh, appropriation from EMA. They received revenue from Oak Ridge Preservation Community Alliance. And the Got a motion. Second. Need a second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion on EMA? All in favor, roll call vote. Scott. Aye. Jenenberg. Aye. Britt. Aye. Mallridge. Aye. Waddell. Aye. White. Aye. Val. Aye. And Meredith. Number six, Anderson County Library Board. It's an appropriation from the local restricted funds. Somebody, did somebody have something to say? Question on that? No, I just said, move. move for approval. All right, got a motion to approve. Need a second, got a second. Any discussion on the lib library board? All in favor, roll call vote. Scott. Aye. Kinnenberg. Aye. Rick. Aye. Paul Ridge. Aye. Waddell, uh, White, uh, Val, uh, Meredith. Uh, Next up is the highway department. It's a um, approval. insurance recovery. Yes. Got a motion to approve. Second. Got a motion and a second to approve the highway department's request. Uh, question. Uh, questions. Roll call vote. Scott. Aye. Bird. Aye. Chris. Aye. Paul Ridge. Aye. Waddell. Aye. White. Aye. Val. Aye. Meredith. Aye. Pardon. Motion carries. Parks Park Department. Park. also an increase in Park. revenue from storage fees and they're increasing um, board codes. Got a motion? Need a second? Second. Got a motion and a second. Discussion? All in favor, roll call vote. Scott. Aye. Kennenberg. Aye. Britt. Aye. Allridge. Aye. Dale. Aye. White. Aye. Val. Aye. Meredith. Aye. 44 through 46 are from the finance department. Seeking approval as a group. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Got a motion to approve it. Approve. Got a second. Discussion. Forty-four through forty-six. Uh, Olive. We got to do roll it. Roll call vote. Aye. 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 Forty-seven through forty-eight, uh, forty, uh, forty-seven through fifty-eight as a group. Any questions? Questions. All in favor? Roll call vote. Commissioner Scott. Yeah, aye. Kimberg. Aye. Chris. Aye. Allridge. Aye. Adele. White. Aye. Val. Aye. Meredith. Aye. Motion carries. All right, 59 is a trans is a, a transfer from payroll for John Victory for Motor Pool Fleet Services. Sure. Yes. I'd like to make the motion we approve uh, transfers items 59 through 67. I'll still move. Thank you. Did everyone hear that? We got a motion. Yes, it all got a motion. All right, got a motion and a second. Okay. All right, guys. Hey, whoa, slow down just a little, man. I mean, I feel like we're at an auction and we're trying to bust out the gates before 4.30. We got 70 pages we're whipping through. We're, we are not rushing anyone. We're, I just answered, uh, we got a motion on the floor to uh, approve this. We're, we're not trying to rush you, Teresa. All right, so you're going from page 59 40, to the end? 59. To 67. That was the motion if you uh, uh, ask us questions. All these are transfers by payroll or major line item. What'd you say, Teresa? Sorry. You're going to 69. Three. Item number 63 is for a transfer of $97,000 for salaries coming out of the medical insurance code for EMS 
to increase the pay for the director, medical personnel, overtime, life insurance, and part-time. Now, as far as I recall, wasn't it just last year that EMS gave everybody a bump at the end of the year? And then when we talked about pay raises or increases for cost of living, they got another increase on top of it? You're right, Ms. Teresa, but uh, but Nathan or the mayor is not here, so th there's no one here to answer that I'm question. Sure they're online. Mayor's online. Mayor, uh, he wrote a letter, too, and I can read that if you'd like. Yes. We're getting budget. Nathan Excuse is me. also online, uh, Mr. Chairman. Nathan is online, and there is a whole letter that was in the budget uh, packet that talks about this issue. This is related to the original budget being budgeted for 26 payrolls, where this year they have 26.64 payroll. So these adjustments are to address that oversight. And that, that backup letter is on page 63. And again, Nathan is here online and he can answer any further questions. Thank Mayor, sure. I just assumed that everyone had, I just assumed that everyone had read that letter. I'm sorry yes. if anybody hadn't. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Nathan, why is there an increase of $1,773 for the director? So that, uh, that's to cover the 0.64 in additional payroll. To so is that going the, towards you or a supervisor? It's going towards my code, but it is not, there is nobody that has received a pay increase. Mm -hmm. So Robbie and, I, Robbie and I emailed uh, back in May. Robbie pointed out that I needed to make sure that, especially our payroll codes remain in the black because if they go out of balance, they slow down. That that becomes an audit. Not my so I'm doing this just to make sure we don't have an audit finding so that we keep all of these codes in the black. And you're pulling that out of the medical insurance? That's correct. Uh, that's something else Robbie and I had discussed during this fiscal year. Um, I no longer have the approval to know what medical insurance that my staff has. So I have to be told what to budget for, for medical insurance. And last year, uh, the information we got was wrong and was over budgeted for medical insurance. But Robbie and I spent time this year to make sure that for the budget proposed for next year, that we don't encounter that same issue. So that's not gonna be there's nobody that's losing insurance. There's no threat of not being able to pay uh, the county portion of insurance for our employees. That was just a, a budgeting issue that occurred when setting up the budget for this fiscal year. When did you go over all of this to find that $97,000 was needed to be shifted to cover the overtime and part-time and the wagers? So I track our pay uh, all throughout the year. Um, Robbie and I talked about making sure those are balanced. We talked about that in May. As far as the medical insurance, but Robbie and I spoke very, very early on in the beginning of the fiscal year. As far as um, when the budget got passed, Robbie and I talked about it back then. Also, just thought to be clear, when you have an unfilled position for medical insurance, we put in the highest amount, gold, for family because if we don't, then we're gonna be asking for more money later. So any unfilled position gets the maximum amount of health insurance in it. So that's how we do every department that has an unfilled position. And Nathan, how many vacancies do you have at this time? So right now we have one position that is not filled, uh, but we do have several employees that are out uh, due to injury or um, other issues. What position is it that's open? I have a paramedic position. Full-time or part-time? I have a full-time, but uh, we are taking on part-time as well. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Yes, uh, I had a question about 59 uh, from John Vickery. What's your, what's your question, Mr. Bob? Um, 
he's asking for approval to use 20,000 that is already in his budget to adjust the pay scale for team team, team members, excuse me. Um, is that something that has been reviewed by uh, human HR, human resources? I mean, or should it be re reviewed? No, sir, because last year we had this approved last year in the in budget and commission and they approved it as a permanent transfer. But we have to handle it this way by amendment every year because if money's not budgeted at the beginning of the year in payroll, then we can't do an ID in our department or like a journal entry. We have to get approval. Even though you all approved it permanently, we have to come every year and get the same approval basically for something you've already approved. So he gets money from other departments that that helps pay for salaries in his department for work he does like for EMS or even the school departments. And um, we then we transfer money to these payroll codes at the end of the year through a budget amendment. Thank you. Thank you. Any question. other questions? Yes, I do have a question, Mr. Chairman. Yes, go um, ahead. Yeah, I was just looking to see if Mr. Vickery was online, but I don't see him. Um, hmm. Because I wanted to Dismissed. find out. Pardon? Hello? Go ahead. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. We're listening. Well, if Mr. But Vickery Mr. Vickery's is online, not here. Right. Well, I guess I'll just not ask my question and I'll find him at a later date. Okay, uh, but he's not here, so I, I can't answer that. I'm uh, any other question? At Mr. Chairman, if, um, if she wants to ask, I may be able to assist. Well, Mayor Frank, my, yes, my, my concern is that, uh, you know, Mr. Vickery lost some very valuable employees that were well-trained and I wish that, um, you know, it was something that he would have come to some people to see if there wasn't something that could have been done to help retain them. And that was just my concern. And yeah. uh, because you know as well as I do that it's far more, more costly to continue training people or look for people that are qualified than to try to keep them. So that was all I was going to ask him is just in the future. That, that's a good point, ma'am. That's a good point to help, you know, retain people to let us know. That's all. Okay. Good. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other questions on 59 to 63? 67. I think it's 63. 67. Oh. Any other questions between 60, 59 and 67? Any other questions? The well, roll call vote. Scott. Aye. Kinnenberg. Aye. Britt. Aye. Allridge. Aye. Bell. Aye. White. Aye. Bell. Aye. And Meredith. Aye. Motion carries. All right, 68 and 69 are from the finance department. They're major line items, and the only reason is I'm trying to pay for some health insurance for some other departments that actually maybe had an employee quit and they rehired somebody that had family when they had single, so they were short in their health insurance and I'm taking it from another one. Got a motion to approve 68. Get a second. Second. Got a motion. Got a motion. Thank you. I got a motion in a second to approve 68. 69. And 69. Discussion. And 69 is trustees commission that we're paying $12,000 out of unassigned. It may not be needed, but if we have a good, a really big gene tax collections, then we'll need that money in there to um, pay the percentage we pay for the trustees commission. Any questions on 68 or 69? I've got a motion and a second. All in favor, roll call vote. Scott. Aye. Gennenberg. Aye. Britt. Aye. Allridge. Aye. Waddell. White. Aye. Val. Aye. And Meredith. Aye. All right, number 70 is a um, appropriation from the mayor, county mayor's office. It's $11,658 from other general administration and other contracted services from the, um, to decrease the county courthouse security um, fund uh, that's controlled by the commission for the single entrance. I got a motion for 
I got a motion. I need a second. Second. I got a motion and a second. Any questions on the county mayor's request? I got uh, one Any? question. Go ahead. This right here, uh, not about dealing with the single entrance, but this right here is dealing with the renovations for 118A and also with the commission room. I do know in the past, the office in the commission room has been used uh, many times over and over and over uh, for uh, special uh, uh, meetings or special gatherings uh, uh, for my commissioners uh, uh, when we've had uh, uh, people come in when we need to get off to the side and talk to folks uh, about different things and stuff. And uh, and I understand that the, the room uh, that has been used as the vault, which has been used by our previous uh, direct uh, deputy, uh, chief deputy, uh, Mary Murphy, we got a lot of uh, stuff in that room. Uh, and, and it's being used now by our chief deputy, uh, uh, Annette. There's a lot of files and stuff that's in that room, and they're talking about maybe move that stuff over there to that office there, which we presently use. Uh, I have concerns about uh, losing those two particular areas uh, uh, that uh, we use as a commission. Uh, because uh, we don't have that much space as it is already, and to, uh, to continue to lose space and give up space, I don't... Uh, I have concerns about that because uh, I mean, right now, because of the uh, COVID uh, pandemic and everything, uh, we haven't been able to utilize it like we normally would. But uh, there have been many of times that we have gone off to that side office in there and uh, closed the door and talked to uh, citizens and, and this, that, and the other, and uh, and had our little uh, different side meetings while other commissioners have been out in the room. And then uh, again, you know, we do have a lot of stuff in that vault area that is utilized, uh, and uh, there's going to be space and stuff that we are going to lose. And uh, and I do know that I talked to Annette, and she is still using it. And I do know Mary Murphy used it very heavily when she was there. And uh, so I do have concerns about losing those two particular areas. Thank you, Mr. Fritz. That's a good point. Any other any other discussion on this? Any other you know, questions? Not, Any other? And I just go ahead, ma'am. Which, ma'am? <laughs> go ahead, Catherine. <laughs> well, just very quickly, I was going to ask what considerations had been given for the items that are in the vault area, and where would they be placed? Um, Commissioner Denenberg, uh, we we did look at that room with Annette and Jeff Cole, and Jeff Cole did say that he could make room in his his area for those filing cabinets. Uh, he actually, Annette is actually under his, you know, uh, pay umbrella, if you will. And so um, I know there's also a separate area to the right of Annette's desk in that area. If we didn't, if, if I understand the commissioners wanting to keep their space, we were only strictly looking at that vault area as an extension of the 118. And um, a lot of the meetings that are taking place, uh, whether it's the HR advisory, board of trustees, a lot of government meetings take place in that room. And um, so we just saw this as an opportunity. Um, there are those filing cabinets in there, but really there's just some older stuff like a couch. There's a wonderful, beautiful antique uh, refrigerator. Um, but we thought that that would provide a space that commissioners can use, you know, if you have meetings. So uh, Jeff did say we could make room for that. Well, that's fine. I, I had no con concerns about the fact that expanding that room would certainly uh, be a benefit. I was just wondering what considerations had been given for the filing cabinets and the items that are in there and where would they go? Yes. That's all. Thank you. Well, I just don't Thank want you, to Lee. I just don't want to lose the office that's in the commission room because uh, that is used heavily by commissioners quite a bit during uh, the course of the year by uh, five uh, commissioners. Yeah, but it doesn't sound like I don't want to be plans for that, Commissioner Fritz, to take that. Ms. Teresa, you got a question? Yes, sir. And and I was going to follow the heels of, of Chuck. Um, you know, when we have beer board meetings, we're holding them in 118A. When there's a meeting going on upstairs, 
that might be like conservation or, or one of the other um, commissions or meetings are going on. And I've, and as an example, we've got fire commission that's been rescheduled. We go to 118A as well. And Chuck's right. We do have people that come in and because it's a close to the door and sometimes they are elderly and don't need to be trying to go up the stairs to another area of the courthouse, we do meet with them in 118A. Um, we do need to keep that small office off to the side for the commissioners as well, because they're, although there's just one desk in there, it's an easy area to utilize for research. Um, I just, I never, took any, I never took into consideration how much 118A itself is used by the commissioners. And Chuck has a valid point. That's good. Thank you, ma'am. This would make one. Any other questions? Yes. Go ahead. Any Mayor. other questions? Mayor was going to say something. Oh, I just said, uh, Commissioner Scott, that's because it's so heavily used. That's why we were looking at the vault only. And it would actually be expanding room 118A. That's what the effect would be. So it would still be connected to the commissioner's office. It would just be a larger 118A for you all. And then we could put the technology in there, have a screen and some of the things. That's the way I understood that. Yeah. Well, that's the way I understood that. So I think that's going to be a welcome yep. uh, renovation down there. So uh, look forward to that being done. Any other questions on that? Well, my understanding was the stuff was going to be moved out of the vault and moved to that other office area. And that's what I didn't want to lose. I understand. A good point, Chuck. Good point. Any other questions on this? Any other discussion? And just to be clear, this this budget amendment pays for the architectural fees for single secure entrance and renovation expansion of meeting 118A meeting room. So there's an attached mem memo for the timeline summary. So it's not for the single entrance, it's for the architectural design, the fees that were associated with it. So we have a first, we can vote now. Wait a minute, we're going to spend $11,000 just to get somebody to tell us. We've already had it done, right, Mayor? Well, we have a concept design. This would be the full architectural fee uh, with construction documents, everything, and it's based on um, a cost of construction, which is a high-end uh, estimate of 132480 And if Commission wanted to go ahead and reserve up to that amount, uh, in addition to the fees, that would cover the whole project. I mean, you What's have the pleasure of the commission. You have funds in that restricted for administration of justice of two forty three nine eighty eight. So, if you wanted to just go ahead and, and reserve that, you could do that. What's the pleasure of the commission committee? Uh, any more? Any other questions on this number seventy? We're asking to. We've got a motion on the floor. We need a roll call vote. Yes or no? Okay. Scott. Aye. Timberg. Aye. Britt. Aye. Mallridge. Aye. Waddell. Aye. White. Aye. Val. Aye. And Meredith. Aye. 71, Ryan Sutton. From ACPV, it's um, increasing other contracted services, $38,000, and they're decreasing their committed for social and cultural mm -hmm. restricted fund, $38,000. Do I hear a, a motion on number 71? So moved. I got a motion to approve 71. I need a second. second. I got a motion and a second to approve item 71. Any discussion? Any discussion? Roll call vote. Scott. Aye. Enberg. Aye. Chris. Aye. Allridge. Aye. Val. White. Aye. Val. Aye. And Meredith. Aye. Okay, 72 and 73 are both from the mayor. It's restricting money. For both of these, we're restricting money that we took out of the restricted code and put in expenditure codes and we're not going to spend it this year so they're take, wanting to restrict keep their the money like the senior center was from donations and they're 
the 27,200 was from their donations and we're moving it back to the senior restricted code so they don't lose that money or it rolls into I, don't. I got a motion to approve 72 and 73. Second. You need a second. Got a motion and a second. Thank you, Mr. Bob. Discussion. Any Robbie, questions on this? Go ahead, Ms. Teresa. Robbie, which email is that included in? Uh, which email? Yeah. The very last one I sent you today. All right, bear with me just a moment. Sure. <clears throat> It was probably about three, two thirty or three. The last one I have from you is at twelve forty-five. Eleven pages long. This one would have probably been two pages. No, it might have been. Um, the mayor's included a letter with her um, to the senior center. It's from the mayor. The mayor also sent this out too. Two pages. Bear with me a minute. Did you get it? I got it. So it was twelve forty-five. Two pages. So this is to re requesting to reserve funds not expended from codes that were increased with senior center donations. $27,200. What yes, are those funds going to be used for? Well, they were, they were transferred. Is, is someone, is the mayor speaking? Commissioner Scott, what they were, if you recall, we in, and I've forgotten the amount, I, I um, pulled it earlier today. We put approximately $42,000 of donations and we all have to appropriate those. We can't, mm -hmm. even though the senior, you know, seniors deposited them as donations, it requires your approval to appropriate. So when we were looking at the 96 Mariner Point facility, we knew we needed to do some work, move the walls, uh, do ADA parking spaces. There's some construction that will have to be done so we went to you and asked you to appropriate into these codes. Mm -hmm. It ended up taking longer to do the purchase and um, it went another 30 days. And so we did not get to do all of that work. So we're pulling those donations back out and then we'll come back after the next budget year and you all, and we will request that authorization for you to put it back into those codes so that we can do that work. See, because That's a good explanation. At the end of a fiscal year, so we can't, otherwise we could have just left it in there and then when we got to the construction, we could get it done. But because the fiscal year ends at June 30th, it's it would just roll back into the general fund. But it's... And and part of the reason why I'm asking all this, Mayor, is there's, you know, we've got all these requests for funds to be moved around, whether it's for a cooler, brand new chairs, more tables, um, knocking down walls, expanding this area and that area. I mean, this $600,000 project that started about six years ago to be able to get a, a larger area for the seniors is now turning into about a million and a half. And it's because, well, we need more money for electricity. I've got to pay for more garbage disposal. And now we've got you know, $1,200 being moved from electricity over to a cooler. We've got money being moved for the gas services to a cooler. We've got money being moved all over the place. And a simple project is getting bigger and bigger and bigger with people sticking their hand out per se and saying, well, we need more money for pay raises and we need more money for chairs and tables. We just bought Main Street, we we spent $15,000 and we got couches, chairs, refrigerators, freezers, all of this stuff that no tags were ever put on to say that it was county goods. And now you're coming forward saying we need tables and chairs. 
We need coolers. We have, if you look over the budget year, we have come with very few budget amendments because their fund is extremely small. And the two, this request is to reserve donated money. And it just unfortunately falls at a bad point in the year. If this would have been August, we had put it in those funds, our construction project would have been finished. All we're, redo, all we're doing is reserving that money. The other two amendments, one is to uh, address year-end shortfalls, which that is pretty much your entire budget agenda tonight is all of the departments shoring up where they didn't properly or or they didn't foresee an invoice or um, they didn't have uh, the, the right budgeting. So the one amendment that is the internet, I mean, that is the same as every other I mean, the majority of your amendments tonight, the one request for the coolers, I did send a backup letter and what Cherie was in, those are her funds and she's asking for an interdepartmental transfer. Um, the design was, the design is for a walk-in cooler and a walk-in freezer eventually. She did not look and see the total extent of the cost of that. So. I've modified her request. And if you've been to the senior center, all of their chairs and tables up there is a, it's a mishmash assortment of, of all donated material. And so I saw this as an opportunity. I put in the plan there with the community room, how the tables would be lined up. And it's just a transfer within her department. It's not taking money from anyone else. Uh, and she did not. Uh, she did not come to commission and ask for more electricity money, and then turn around and put it into this so. request. This was what she had budgeted, and is asking to transfer. Two hundred five Main did not have a mishmash of tables and chairs. They had an event center that had chairs. It had tables, and the seniors received all of those goods. If they're not over at at the location now for Main Street or over at Mariner Point, that's not up for us to keep, not up to, to us to keep up with it all. And I'm just, I'm tired of, of continual, well, we need this. Well, it's going to cost $20,000. Well, we just need $15,000 more. And then it coming to us saying, we've created a 501c3. We now have a board. We're going to be doing fundraisers not hearing anything in the paper, on the news, nothing. But they managed to get money from a grant. It's not a fundraiser. I've sat down and talked to Cherie for hours and given her suggestions as to how she can go about raising money and making it a community event. She has raised a lot of money, Commissioner Scott, and there is... Uh, if I'm not mistaken, and Robbie, correct me if I'm wrong, has $74,000 in donations in her account. That's correct. That's a lot of hard work. And even some members on uh, Commissioner Val came down and sang as Elvis Presley, mm -hmm. and they worked very hard to raise that money. <laughs> I'm very proud of it. <laughs> The increase in her pay was supposed to be coming out of those funds. It's in our minutes, it's in the newspaper, it was, it's public. Ms. Teresa, are you finished? Are you done? Sure, I'm done. Well, thank you. May I thank you for those. Mr. Chairman, I would like to just interject something here very quickly. I wasn't on commission when that happened, but I was in the audience and I do remember that um, when it came to the purchasing of the 205 building and Ms. Phillips was to be the um, organizer of the events and be responsible for that sort of thing, um, as I recall, that was 
why she was given a substantial raise. <laughs> In saying that, I recall very vividly that at that point I had suggested to some people that, well, you know, the county's now in purchase of that, in uh, possession of that building, let's, you know, support them. And uh, they said, well, call and see what it would cost to have a meeting. <clears throat> so I called and Ms. Phillips answered the phone. And um, I told her that I was calling to ask uh, what would be the cost of having just a meeting. Um, all we would need, table chairs and a microphone. Well, how many people? I said, well, somewhere between 50 and maybe 75, but no more. And I was quoted a price of $700. And I <laughs> kind of choked. I kind of laughed a little bit and said, well, thank you very much. And I hung up. So I kind of got the indication from that conversation that they either were not wanting to do an event or I don't know if maybe it was for the group that I was calling on behalf of, but that's neither here nor there. But I do still am, am bothered by the fact that there was an extremely substantial raise given and the requirements of that raise have never been met. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shane Val. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was on commission when it was bought. I'm sitting right over there in my seat. I understand the history of the purchase of 205 Main, and I understand the heartburn that a lot of people on commission and a lot of people out in the community have with it. I, I, I still get calls from constituents about this, but I, I think we're marrying two issues together here that maybe need to be divorced. If I understand this request correctly, this is money that people have donated to the senior center, regardless if 205 was bought correctly or not. These are people who have come down and said, I want to donate to the senior center. Now I understand we have to prove this and we have some kind of oversight on it and I get that. And we do need to keep a watchful eye to make sure the money is spent appropriately. But at the end of the day, these are people such as myself who have went down and said, okay, what are the needs here? And we were told this need, this need, and this need. And we said, okay, here's a donation to help you pay for these needs. If we as a committee are going to say no, those people who donated this money okay. thinking it was going to be spent on this, we're not going to allow that money to be spent on that, I'm not going to donate it. And I'm sure other people aren't either. So I'd like to ask the committee to keep that in mind. This is donation funds that Cherie and the center are accountable to their donators for. Uh, I'd like to remind everybody of that. And one more thing to add to the mayor, uh, Commissioner White got up there that night and did a pretty good Elvis job himself. <laughs> yeah, Commissioner Bell, I, I do apologize. I did get off topic, but you are correct. These are just monies that are belong to them. It didn't come from anybody else but the outside, and they, in my opinion, should be able to do whatever they, they want to the come outside, up. And they, in my opinion, should be able to do whatever they want to come up. And they, in my opinion, should be able to do whatever they want to come up. Thank you, Ms. Lee. We need a roll. Okay, you can cut me off. Okay. We need a, I've got a motion on the floor to approve this. I need a roll call vote, please. Here, oh, wait, any more discussion? I do have one more question. Ask, go ahead and ask me. Sorry, Mr. Chairman, it's actually for the mayor. Um, Commissioner Denenberg was on commission about a year ago and she did ask Cherie for a business plan. To this date, we've never received it. Are we likely to get one? Mayor, are you still with us? Yes, I'm sorry. I couldn't get it to come on. Um, I can talk to Cherie. I don't have a recollection of that, but I'll be happy to reach out to her ASAP. Please do that. Yes, sir. Any other, any other questions? 
If it's appropriate, I'd like to call for the question. Let's do a roll call vote to approve this. Number 73. 72 and 73. 72 and 73. I got a motion and a second to approve. All in favor, roll call vote. Scott. Yep, you let them have their money. Annenberg. Mr. Denenberg. Aye. Thank you. Fred. Aye. Allridge. Aye. Bell. White. Aye. Val. And Meredith. All right. Before we get into the sections, we need to readdress eight, nine, and ten that were pulled out of the consent agenda. Okay. That was my understanding. No, I'm sorry. What do you say? That was my understanding. What? What we just voted on replaced eight, nine, and ten. No, that was an additional budget amendment to five, eight, nine. All right, now we're going to go back and look at eight, nine, and ten. Those were just moving the donations. Eight, nine, and ten are transfers within her budget that she has requested. Uh, Mayor, you got any comments on these eight, nine, and ten? Uh, no, sir, that is what we were just discussing. And I did include when I sent the letter out, I did clean up that one budget amendment because uh, Cherie <coughs> had them on two separate ones because of the box. And I sent you a new type one if if you prefer, but it's the exact same amounts and exact same codes. Okay. I've got a motion to approve eight, nine, okay. and 10. I got a motion and a second. I got a motion and a second to approve eight, nine, and 10. Discussion. Questions on eight, nine, or 10. I got a motion and a second to approve. Any questions? A roll call vote. Hearing none, we're gonna have a roll call vote. All in favor? Scott? No. Lindbergh? Yes. Fred? Yes. Allred. Yes. Waddell. Uh, White. Yes. Val. Uh, Meredith. Sorry. Motion carries. Thank you. All right, moving on to the section. Section A was by me. That's under new business. That last. Can you take that up now? Sure. Yes. Stephanie, a new business for grant approval. Where'd she go? Yeah. Please. <laughs> anyway, the tourism with conservation is applying. They need a, an approval for a grant. It is a mat, has a matching on it. I got a motion to approve. Commissioner Fritz could also speak to this if he he's the chairman of the conservation board. I've got a motion to approve Stephanie's request. I need a second. Second. I got a motion and a second to approve to approve the grant request. Now we'll ask the, or entertain questions or comments or discussion. Yes. I just want to say, so I'm, uh, I'm the chairman of the conservation board. Uh, this uh, I'm a grant that uh, the, we're working with these uh, tourism board with Stephanie on um, is uh, something that uh, the return on investment for Anderson County is going to be, uh, I mean, you're not going to be able to put a number on it. I mean, it's, uh, uh, we're going to get back more than what we're, uh, we're going to put into it. Uh, uh, the amount of uh, uh, dollars that the county is going to receive in return is going to be unreal. Uh, just going to be a long, long uh, lasting thing year after year after year. Uh, and uh, people are coming in, uh, you know, buying whether it's uh, supplies, groceries, gas, you name it. Uh, our parks have been uh, uh, at capacity, and this right here is basically is going to expand the uh, the park and you know, allow more people to come into our parks. And so, good job, uh, Chuck. And so, uh, I can't see this uh, being uh, nothing but a no brainer to help uh, uh, tourism in Anderson County. Thank you, Chuck. We got Stephanie here for any questions for Stephanie. Come on, ask for something good. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all ladies all left a room. <laughs> we got 
we got Stephanie here. Anybody got a question for Stephanie concerning this grant? Thank you, Chuck, for those comments. Hearing none, we'll take a roll call vote. All in favor, say aye when it comes your time. Awesome roll call. Thank Mr. you, Scott. Aye. Stenberg. Aye. Britt. Aye. Mulridge. Aye. Bell. Uh, White. Aye. Bell. Aye. And <clears throat> Meredith. Thank you, Rick. Thanks, Rick. Okay. Jay Yeager. For Section A, just really quick, because I put this on the agenda because I thought I was going to have to ask commission for an appropriation in case we lose the um, Toyota tax refund lawsuit. We haven't lost it yet. It's been appealed. Um, if we do, we're going to owe $241,000 back plus in refunds. $261,617, excuse me. But um, I thought I was going to have to ask for appropriation approval from commission, but the CCA law states that the trustee can write the check or we can in the finance department. So that's been taken care of. And I know y'all went to executive session about this, so you're aware of the, the situation. So I don't really need any kind of a action or anything tonight on that. Thank you, Robert, for all your hard work on that. Um, law also allows, according to uh, Mr. Allen, for us not to collect the disputed portion. You think they can hear you? What I need to be right here. Sorry. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Don't let me break that coronavirus rule. Uh, thank you so much, Robbie. I really appreciate you. You asked me to come to the budget committee tonight and um, I guess talk about uh, my office staff and a couple commissioners uh, expressed a desire to want to help us. But um, I, I'm not going to come here tonight and ask for additional people. I, I'm just not going to do that. Uh, I do want to announce the retirement of Barbara Love, and uh, she's going to be greatly missed. Mm. Uh, she's been here for years, and uh, I was fortunate to get her to come out of the retirement and uh, work with me another couple of years. And uh, but she's told me um, hard and fast that she was leaving July one. And uh, then I walked in Monday morning, and I said, "Please stay with me another three weeks." So. I'm getting a, a new gentleman. He's a sheriff's deputy, uh, Brad Pruitt. He's done some internship work with me. He's extremely bright. He's a third year law school student. He's gonna take Barbara's spot. So I'm not gonna ask for a new position tonight, but um, what I'd like to do is ask permission uh, from this body to roll over any remaining funds to cover the increase in Brad's salary. He's not really getting an increase from me, but I don't wanna make the man take a pay cut from his uh, uh, corporal position with the sheriff's office. So that's that's uh, about $6,000 more than what Barbara makes and what's going to be in that code. Uh, Robbie was kind enough to run a, a check on that. And um, since Barbara actually took some days off and didn't use annual leave, there's about a $6,000 balance. So it works out really good. So with this body's approval, I'd like to roll over any balance that remains that code and use that to offset the expense of um, Brad Pruitt coming to Barbara's position and make up that difference in salary. And that way he will have to take a pay cut. And um, now in the future, I'll be honest with you, Brad is a third year law student. Uh, he graduates in December. I'd like to bring him on as an attorney at some point. Not, again, I'm not asking for a new position, but I would have to supplement his pay in order to retain him. Uh, he'll get a chance to take the bar in December. Uh, he's bright. And I think he'll pass the bar the first time, and so his results should come out in March. At that time, I, I think I need to pay him. But again, I'm not asking for a large raise for him because I, I'll be glad to use the 37201 in Barbara's salary code to offset his money. And uh, that would uh, help a lot. But what I'd like for you to do is to allow me to come back at some point around March. We'll see where we're at. I think that's the best way to approach this and know exactly what it's going to take to give this gentleman a raise after he passes the bar. Uh, also, I'll have the uh, liability of family insurance coverage, too. So there'll be some more there that's going to be effective. So I'll 
I'll have a better look at it for you to know exactly what it will take to finish this year. I'm talking about 2021 fiscal year and uh, finish till July 1 of next year, sometime around March. But in the meantime, Brad's going to fill the shoes of Barbara. Uh, she's going to stay on about two or three weeks longer uh, mm -hmm. to get him up to speed. He's been working with her at least one day a week. I can't ask him to work much more. He's on vacation. He's, he's left the sheriff's office. He's supposed to be on vacation finishing exams and doing an internship with um, uh, the state attorney general's office remotely. So anyway, um, she'll stay on for about 10 or 12 days, get him started. Then I'll pick up uh, the rest of the training with Nicole. Uh, he'll be doing uh, mainly our delinquent taxes, our codes enforcement, things of those of that nature until I get him up full speed. And um, if that's what I'd like to do. I do appreciate the opportunity. To Mr. Chairman, motion to approve. Okay. Help. And um, but I'll be back now. Just remember that <laughs> I'll be back sometime around March. And uh, uh, I just want you to understand that. Thank you, sir. I do. I got a motion and a second to approve Jay's request. Any discussion? Any discussion? Roll call vote. Scott. Thank you. Aye. Hindenburg. Aye. Britt. Aye. Smallridge. Aye. White. Aye. Val. Aye. And Meredith. You ready? Meredith. Got it. Sorry. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. All right. Brian Young, IT employee, Section B. He is Mr. taking Chair. that off. Mr. Yes. Chair. Yes. Before yes. we go further, uh, I know our law director is a very uh, uh, hard worker, but he's also a very humble person. And he's not going to definitely ask anybody for anybody help throughout this time, but uh, to make sure we don't let this slip by and that uh, uh, we don't uh, f fail to address this at a f future date, I'd like to make the motion that we go ahead and uh, uh, ask that uh, we revisit this uh, in March of next year uh, uh, to. Uh, so we don't let it uh, go by and that uh, we are uh, put it on our agenda for at that, that time. I thought that's just what we done, Chuck. Uh, we just approved the money. We didn't approve that we, re we would revisit it. Can you ask us, Jay, to revisit this in March? Yes, sir. I think some of the thought it was just And I've made a motion. Okay. That was okay. Okay, we got a motion on the floor to revisit Jay's request in March. Do I hear a second? Second. I got a motion and a second. Discussion, Ms. Teresa. Well, I was just saying that that when I made my motion, it was inclusive of everything he was up there ex expressing. That's what I understood. That's what I understood. But uh, yeah. just to make sure we're... <laughs> All right. Okay, good. Just to make sure that we're on the same page, roll call vote. All in favor of uh, revisit, revisiting this in March, uh, roll call vote. Say yes. Scott. Aye. Sandberg. Aye. We got you double. Aye. Small Ridge. Aye. Waddell. Uh, White. Aye. Val. Aye. Okay. Passes. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you. Okay, as I was saying, Section B, we're taking off the table because Brian couldn't, he had a family emergency and couldn't be here today. So we're gonna address this, I guess, in July. And um, we've already covered C. D is the compensation plan update by Kim and Jeff. Kim, are you ready? You need to come up here and we'll get out of your way. Scott, I think y'all email I'm sure you had it. It. Thank you, Regina. Um, read it. Um, primarily, it was, it's just kind of an update. It's been about four or five months since I've been here when you all sent, um, sent me back out to look over the plan narrative for the compensation plan, the narrative portion, sent it back to the HR advisory committee. It is currently being updated. There, we discuss it, changes are made. Uh, Jay is currently adding uh, TCA language to it. So hopefully at our next meeting, I think in the email I wrote June, but the next meeting is set for July. That's a regular meeting. We just meet quarterly. So um, we'll be meeting again then. And hopefully I come back then with a plan for you all to review, but that is being gone through, right? The other thing that we talked about last time
um, was a compensation pay audit. And that went back to the HR advisory committee and a um, subcommittee was put together. That subcommittee was made up of several of your elected officials as well as some of your commissioners, four of your commissioners. Uh, three of them are on your budget committee. And during that committee, um, they made the motion to update the green circle disparity issues, supported the minimum amount effective July 1, to reduce the liability risk to the county. Robbie was also to include what the benefit amount to that amount would look like. That was presented to the HR advisory committee. Um, they came back with a recommendation for the HR department to continue to advise as needed to departments and commission on pay scales. And that's where we're at. Any questions for Kim? Any questions? For Ms. Jeffers, I'm sorry. Any questions for Ms. Jeffers? Any comments? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you all. I think that's all I have. Any other questions for the budget committee? New business or old business? Anybody? Has anybody got any new business? Has anybody got any old business? We are adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you all. Good job.